one kind of question that we get pretty frequently uh, in support around responsive website design and images. So this is my, my test website here. I've got a, a banner at the top, uh, which is displaying a background. And if I use the, the show on different device um, option here in the page editor, you can see that on desktop, it's showing a, a wide layout. Um, the, the girl's uh, head in this case is cropped off. As I change the size of the screen that I'm viewing this for, I'm getting a different cropping of that background image. Right, so on a, on a less wide monitor, more compact, I'm seeing more of, of that girl's uh, head now. If I go to tablet, I get a similar type of layout. And if I go to mobile, I'm gonna get a completely different layout, right? The, the sides of that image are now completely cropped off and I'm seeing kind of the full full height body image there, right? So this is uh, the nature of responsive uh, website design is that the element, the, the container in this case, this row, this box that I'm displaying on the website is scaling to fit the size of the device. And as that container, that box scales to the size of the device, the background is adjusting uh, to to fit that need, right? Um, you can change the uh, the sizing of the background, so that type of, of behavior is determined by the cover cover size. So cover means don't ever show uh, an empty area in that container. All right. So if we put, for example, original here, and we say don't tile or don't repeat. Uh, this is going to show empty areas. So I've got an empty area on the right and the left. Uh, if I go down to a smaller size, right, it's not scaling down or, or fitting to, to that device. It's just kind of staying as is and, and cropping uh, whatever is going to crop. And on larger screens, it's just going to show empty space. Uh, so by setting it to something like cover, you're stretching that out and saying, if it's too, uh, if it's not wide enough, stretch it so that it's wide enough, even if it has to crop the top and bottom. Um, similarly with the height, if it was not tall enough, it'll stretch the height uh, and crop the sides. Right, so that's the contain size. I'm sorry, the, the cover size. Contain uh, is going to make sure that the entire image always displays. The entire image always displays. So if we take a look at uh, the widescreen, it's full height and I have a lot of empty space on the sides. If I go to mobile, the full width is, is displayed and I have a lot of empty space on top and bottom. All right, so that's the alternative. Um, I think this is probably uh, what most people are after is kind of a, a contained type of behavior, but you can see it doesn't really have a great result, right? Because depending on, on the size of the screen being viewed from, uh, you're gonna get empty space and that can be a bad experience for the customer. Uh, stretch, I really would not recommend. That's gonna distort your, your aspect ratio of your image. So you would rarely wanna use stretch unless it's a very abstract background image, right? Maybe just a, a color or a gradient, something like that. You, may, you might get away with using something like stretch. So cover is, is really the best of, of both worlds. Um, and it's kind of the standard that you see uh, across website design is to use that, that cover. Um, and so the feedback that, that I give customers is um, when you're setting an image as a background, make sure that it's actually a background. It's actually a background image. Oftentimes uh, what happens is someone creates a background image which actually contains the content in addition to the background. So it's it's like a pink background, and then it's got text on there that says, uh, you know, shot from us, uh, we've got quality goods uh, on, you know, on the left-hand side here. And so as that image gets cropped to, to the device, you lose that messaging, right? You lose the content. So what you want to do is split apart the content from the image let the let the background be the background and put the content as content into that section 
right? The examples that we have here, our background is just the girl. Uh, and then our content is made up of a, a selection of different widgets. We have a, a heading, we have a text widget, and then we've got a button, right? All of that is separate from the background. And that's what allows it to reflow to those different screen sizes and even display when, when we're at the mobile mobile layout. All right, so hopefully um, that feedback helps out. Um, I do have kind of a, a technical tip to share, um, you know, in the case that you do want to go the route of, let's say having a slider, which is the most common uh, request that we have is, you know, someone's using a slider and, um, you know, they're dropping in, like I said, an image, which is not really a background. It's, it's the background and it's the content. And they just want to drop it into the slider and, and have that full image be displayed regardless of, of the screen size. So let's take a look. Uh, again, I've dropped in that, uh, that slider widget. Let's delete that, uh, that banner. Um, so I think I have an example here, actually. Let me see if I can uh, click into the slide, go into background image. Yeah, so here's an image, uh, perfect example. Uh, so I'll select uh, this image here. All right, so this is an image that was designed as a background. And you can see the content is actually embedded in, in the image. So as I go down to mobile, you know, that message is completely lost. So the, the best case is kind of what I mentioned before, which is to split apart the background and the content. But let's say, you know, you really don't want to do that. You just want, you just want to make your images and drop them into the slide and have it work. So let's take a look at a workaround um, using some CSS that, that will achieve that, uh, that for you. So again, we don't want to be using background in that case. So I'm going to remove the background image. I'm going to remove the color as well. What we want, are going to be using is an image widget. So I'm on the first slide of that banner. I'm going to drop in an image widget and I'm going to select that, uh, that first banner. Okay. Uh, under the size section, in this case, this is kind of a small image. So I'm going to go in and select uh, for that to be the original size. Um, and I do want this to stretch again. Uh, in this case, I don't care about, uh, about the size of the screen. I always want essentially the width to match the width of the screen. So uh, in this case, I'm going to use uh, stretch or shrink to fit as the image size. All right, so I'm going to do the same for the second slide. I'm going to drop in an image widget, select the second image, use the original size image and stretch or shrink the image to fit the, the space. All right, so if we go ahead and save this and publish it, let's take a look at uh, what it looks like. All right, so if we shrink down the screen here, you can see, again, it's going to shrink down to display just that, uh, that same height. The issue that you run into is the slider is a fixed height. So on mobile, that banner is tiny in terms of height, and you end up with all this white space down at the bottom. Uh, so that's where we kind of need to use that, that CSS workaround to have the slider uh, height be automatic based on the, the containing image. Uh, so let me take a look at, uh, at that snippet and we'll go ahead and share this snippet um, later on. Just copy it here. So back in the pages editor, what I would do is go into the slider settings, go into the advanced tab and click into responsive settings. So in responsive settings, I'm going to take the snippet that I've copied in and drop it into the, the mobile device layout. 
and I'm going to copy in uh, from the this uh, tablet section, I'm going to copy in the ID of the widget. Uh, so I'm just going to copy that, and I'm going to replace where it says widget ID here in the snippet, in all three of those spots. Then I'll hit OK. Now I'm going to save that change and publish, and we'll see the difference in behavior uh, compared to before. Okay, so here's our slider. As I bring the size of that uh, that screen down, you'll see that height is uh, is maintained along the way. Uh, there is one change I forgot there, which you'll notice when it flips through those uh, those banners, you get kind of that jump. Uh, to rectify that, we'd need to go into the slider settings, into the design section, and adjust the the animation to be a fade. So fade is the the only transition that this will really work with. So we'll set them all to fade and you're going to set the transition duration to zero. All right. So with that adjustment, let's go ahead and close that, hit OK, save and publish. All right, let's refresh the page here. All right, and there you go. So now as you toggle those, they just quickly swap out one from the other. All right, so this is, uh, again, a lot of people prefer this type of layout. They don't necessarily want to do the, the, the content through the editor. They just want to create an image and drop it in and have it show the full image regardless of the screen size. Uh, again, this is not the best, uh, this is not the best practice uh, this is being offered as work and the best practice is kind of what I mentioned earlier, which is to separate out the background from the content. And, you know, there, there's other reasons than just kind of the visual. Um, when you're embedding content into an image, it's harder for uh, search engines to, to index that content, right? If you're saying we have the, the best quality printed goods and it's part of the image, the search engine is not going to read that. And so, you know, that uh, that keyword uh, value that you're putting onto the site is being lost. So again, best practice is let the background be the background and bring the content to the forefront. All right, but hopefully this workaround uh, helps some some of you guys out.